He'd left a note, of course. It was quite brief, but at the end he'd asked his neighbour, begged her really, to look after Sally. Mrs Donovan loved dogs, had two of her own. Sally would fit right in. He didn't have to worry about that, at least. He'd bought the rope at the hardware store in Hanover Street. Four metres should be more than enough. The shop assistant hadn't asked him any questions. No reason she should, really. He wasn't a regular there, didn't do much in the way of home maintenance. Back home in his kitchen, he tried to tie a proper hangman's knot. He'd looked it up on the internet. Amazing what you could find out on the internet. Except for a reason to go on living, of course. You could Google that phrase, but all that came back was predictable, religious-oriented hogwash. 300 million hits. All empty. Meaningless. Like his life. Except for Sally, that is. She'd kept him going on longer than he'd thought possible after Jenny had died. But there were limits on how much comfort a dog's companionship could give you. And now he'd reached that limit. The knot was tied. He'd made a bit of a mess of it, really. It didn't look much like the drawing he'd found online. Typical of how he'd botched most things in his life. Still, the loop moved freely enough. It would do. Sally was in her basket in the corner, looking up at him eagerly. She probably thought he was going to take her out for a walk. Not tonight, sweetheart. Never again, actually. Not that Sally knew that, of course. Although now she was whining and looking at him, staring deeply at him. She knew something was wrong. He should put her outside, but it was cold out there, and in a while it would be getting dark. And she'd have to stay out there all night, maybe longer. Who could tell how long it would be before they found him, and Mrs. Donovan read the note. But if you left her inside, that could be worse. What if it took a week? Mrs. Donovan would, might realise that she hadn't seen him for a while, but surely not straight away. He hadn't thought things through, obviously. He'd been too wound up in his own misery. He'd only been able to focus on his one mission, a way to bring it all to an end. Sally whined again. In a sudden rush of resolution, he hardened his heart, stood up with the rope, and stepped through the door into the lounge room, closing it behind him firmly before Sally could follow him. In the lounge room there was an angled ceiling which followed the shape of the roof. At intervals where the crossbeams ran, there was a space between the cedar beams and the ceiling itself, enough room to fit the rope. He'd been staring at those gaps for weeks, thinking about it. This was where he was going to do it. He stood up on the table and threaded the free, the free end of the rope through. Sally started to bark and leapt up at the door in the kitchen. He could hear her claws clattering and dragging down the wood. She'd never done that before. He tried to close his mind to the sound, but that didn't work. Suddenly, standing there stupidly on the table, the noose dangling from his hand, he found that he couldn't shut out thoughts about what would happen to Sally without him. Would Mrs Donovan really take her in? She was on a pension, he knew. Fitting an extra dog might be too much. She's just a stupid dog, he thought savagely to himself. What does it matter if she's taken to the pound, given her way to some cruel stranger I'll put down? Just a damn dog, a damn dog, she doesn't matter. But then, but then... The barking was frantic now. She loves you, he thought. There's still one creature in the world who you matter to, who values your life. And she does matter. She matters a lot. He stood there on the table for a long, long time. After a while, he dropped the noose and climbed foolishly down. He opened the kitchen door. Come on, girl, he said in a husky voice he could hardly identify as his own. Let's go for a walk. <laughs>